What is going on buddy, Zach RC here, welcome back to the channel and welcome along to the first episode of my F123 My Team Career Mode series. So brand new game that has launched today, this is the first day the game has been out for the early access players and we're going to jump in with our first career mode series on this game. If you guys have been enjoying my content F122 in the last couple weeks or so, you, if you're new around here, make sure to get subscribed for all the action we'll be seeing on this game because it's going to be an absolute blast. I'm really looking forward to getting this series underway for you guys because we tried on My Team series last year only lasted a few episodes because the game wasn't in the best of states but we're looking forward to getting this one underway starting as a newcomer on the f1 grid the 11th team with a full first season of competition and we're looking at the settings here so the majority of this video is to be set up for you guys so i will be getting the series together get making sure all the settings are in place in this case but we'll be there'll be timestamps in the description down below so if those of you who want to skip ahead to the race you can go ahead and do that now and we'll be jumping through the rest of the setup in terms of these career settings the most important ones here i'm going to be increasing all of the resources and things for the AI but keeping them on default for ourselves trying to get the AI advantage and we'll turn up fault frequencies so both technical and mechanical faults can happen on the car but only a, uh, only happen at a standard rate so hopefully we shouldn't see too many of those over the course of this one in terms of the rule set we're keeping red flags on standard because I'm hearing there's issues with it to start with so we'll keep an eye on those in case you run into any of them immersive formation like this time around safety car stays on broadcast and the pistol experience as it was last season is on immersive as well so that is all our settings confirmed, then so we jump right in with creating our team and stuff. But first, we've got to choose whether to use our Mighty Micons. We will be using the Mighty Micons not from the start, but we'll hopefully try and get them in further down the line if we can. And without further ado, let's move into first creating the team. First. Let's create your driver. So, so the first task here is to create the driver, and of course, if you guys have been here for a while, you, you'll know sort of why I go for. I always go for the, the sort of the blue and yellow, and it's always the same avatar each time. I've been with that same avatar since 2016 when I started playing these games again. So let's get this team up and running. The first thing we need to do is register a team name and bring in some important partners. Alright, so next step is enter a team name. So this, this, this took a bit of thought and I wanted something better than last year. So this year we're going with ZRC Motorsports, the initials of the channel, and that'll be our name for the first season onward. Now let's choose a primary sponsor for this season. Some sponsors offer a larger sign and bonus up front, some offer more weekly income. The better we perform, the more our level will go up as the team gains more acclaim. Doing this will increase the income from our sponsors. So obviously there'll be a goal that we can try and get on each sponsorship here, which will be on the car for the season. Of course, it can, can be easy just completing the season, but in this case, we're going to take a massive risk here, more signing bonuses to take on the highest offer, eight or better of the constructors. won't be going anywhere fast without a power unit, so let's sign one of those now. Obviously, the greater the performance and durability, the better. But be careful about spending all our cash. We're going to have people and facilities to invest in as well. Power unit suppliers will also provide upgrades throughout the season free of charge. Alright, so the decision here that I decided to go, I decided to go with Mercedes for the power unit because obviously durability will be crucial for us in this first season. We don't want to retire from any too many races because we've got quite a lot of money from the sponsorship as well. And now we're looking to signing a second driver here. drivers interested in joining our team. Look at their stats and pick someone you think can get as good results, as long as we can afford them. We renew contracts periodically, so you'll have plenty of chances to sign someone else should the need arise. All right, so we've got enough money for each of these four for four drivers here, all from the uh, previous F2 grid. And the choice, I'm going to go with Marcus Armstrong, who costs only costs 750k. He's close to Vesti in terms of performance, a bit lower than Noasa and Djokovic, but still works like nicely. So there we go then. We've chosen everything go we need here for our happy. team setup. So that's all sorted. Now we're going to move on into creating the livery, which will be obviously the crucial part of, the, of this series. And we'll have a look here at, of course, the, the suit is already got a blue and yellow sort of design, the same sort of colours of the channel. So I'm going to skip through. I just showed you guys what I did here. So the livery I used was one I got for do it for having the the beta or playing the beta. So this delivery we've got for the season. So we've got mainly that light blue of the channel and the yellow colour, the secondary colour alongside it. We've got we've gone for also a slightly darker blue in certain places, just sort of clashed it quite nicely. I think it works quite nice. The only thing I'm not I'm not so happy with is on the front of the car. I'm not quite a big fan of the, of the design on the nose, but I think it works okay. So obviously we'll, we'll make changes that are necessary. And in terms of our personal sticker there, I was put into the insanity on it. But not least, we need to consider our brand, our badge, and team colours. All right, so there you go. You can see the badge there briefly. I always go for a sort of a, for, for, try and recreate the the logo for um for the channel as best I can. But I wanted to add a a background to it this time. So I, I went with the I went with the kite shield for this one. The curved shield there. I went with the kite shield. So this was just about worked with the um with the, with the space to try and go. I mean, so it's that that darker blue that was on the livery, just to give it a bit more color and then obviously darkened it a bit just to make sure the the light blue on the triangle isn't isn't too um hard to see so there we go there is our badge of the season of course our, our team colors will be the same as our livery so we'll put those in there and that's more or less all sorted so we'll jump into getting underway 
Great, that's everything we need. You can go back and edit anything we've done so far, and we'll come back here at the start of each season. But if you're ready to go, hit advance to head to Team HQ, and we can start our push to the top of Formula One. New year, new drivers, new team. Welcome and great to have you with us as we move far away from the paddock to the headquarters of the newest outfit on the Formula One grid. We've been granted exclusive access with an interview not just with the team owner or the star driver, but both. Because for the first time in modern F1 history, the team owner is behind the wheel themselves. Now is a great time to bring a new team into the sport, particularly off the back of such compelling competition last year. 2022 saw huge regulation changes, and it was Red Bull who came out on top in the developer race. But that was last year. This year could be a very different story. Let me tell you, this facility is an absolute hive of activity, and there is a palpable sense of excitement around the car they've built. They quietly and truly they can challenge at the top and they've had the time now to craft a hugely competitive race car but theory is one thing and taking on the brightest lights in motorsport is quite another so how does the owner of f1's 11th team feel as they prepare to be thrust into the limelight of the f1 circus new driver lineups qatar returns las vegas debuts and the engineering race continues to push the sport and the drivers to new what are they aiming for? Most excited about, most nervous for? Well, soon we will meet them to find out. But first, let's take a look at the back of the car. Thank you so much for having us. Great to be here. I'm going to start with the question that everyone is asking. It's been a long time since we've seen a team owner drive their own car, and a lot's changed since then. Sport has really evolved. So how are you going to manage the responsibility of doing both roles? I try and answer these questions as honest as I can here, especially this first one. Obviously, the idea of doing, doing a series on, on, on the My Team mode can be quite a bit of work, so... And tell me about your teammate. They're clearly very excited to have signed with you. What do they bring to you? And look, obviously, looking into Marcus Armstrong, we saw what they did on paper, looked at the, the, the stats in particular compared to the car drivers around. So we go with that answer on the left there. So tell me about the work on the car. It's clearly a blank canvas. You've done a lot. What have you prioritised? Right, so these next few questions are crucial here because these answers give uh, our department a bit of boost, a bit in terms of morale, which would be a good start. So we need to try and focus on all four of them if we can. So we'll go with the, uh, the chassis department first, sorry, the aero department. Now, there's no getting away from the fact that your competitors have a huge amount of Formula One experience. You are a total newcomer. Tell us where you see the opportunities to make those vital performance gains. So we've done the aero one already, so now we're going to have to look into doing the powertrain one. Because the aim is just to get all four of them having good morale from the start. So we'll go with the answer on the left again. Now, ultimately, your success this season will be determined by whether you can take positions from other drivers. Do you believe this car has the edge? So, aero and powertrain down. I will look into getting that chassis one done as well. And with so many disciplines and experts working so closely together here at your HQ, who gets the coveted teacher's gold star? Who are you most proud of as the first race edges ever closer? And after the last one left here, durability, we answer on the right there. So, all four of our departments should have good morale to start things off. Well, I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for your time, but I'd better let you get back to work. There's plenty more still to do. All the very best for your inaugural F1 season. So here we are now in the career hub for our My Team career mode and looking forward, as I say, to getting underway for the first Grand Prix, which will be in Bahrain. Uh, to have a, have a quick look here around just to what, as to what's going on, the activity timeline there for us to put, put time towards certain parts of our team. The email system, which we'll, we'll look through every so often to see if, if we miss anything in particular. Just got the deeper ones to start off, run through tutorials, things like that. So I won't say much too much time on those. And then, of course, in terms of our facilities, the big thing over driver career that we haven't, didn't have to deal with in the first time around. So we'll go for a little tour here. So this is our aero department, obviously. 
All of these will be spec zero for the time being, but as we make upgrades, they'll get better and better. That's our chassis department, which actually it doesn't it visually doesn't look too bad. But I suppose I, I wouldn't know. I've never been inside a factory in that spec. Our personnel, our simulator is about as good as what I'm playing on right now as it stands. And in terms of our powertrain, of course, got, got us working on the engine there. And hopefully, I mean, these upgrades cost an awful lot. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to make enough money. Our durability is at spec one to start off with because we uh, we said that those guys were the best to start things off. And our marketing department, which will help us with getting uh, more funds for those upgrades later on down the line. So and in terms of R&D, durability is off to the best start as well. Powertrain is also off to, off to the second best start. And then Aero and Chassis both have one upgrade each. So we'll make an upgrade with the resource points that we've already got. So we'll look over in the chassis department and make, a, make, a, um, make an upgrade there. There are our four departments. So we'll see just what goes down. We'll have a look in the chassis department once more and make an upgrade in there. That plank upgrade for 550 resource points. Minor upgrades to start things off. We'll see a lot of minor upgrades to start off. Then as we get further into, we'll get into major upgrades and later on ultimate upgrades, which will help us massively down the line. As of right now, the 10th best team on the grid. So we'll have to set some activities here before we skip, skip forward towards the first race. A pre-season driver press tour. So we're just trying to improve our second driver as best we can. Marcus Armstrong, we need to get him prepped and ready for his first race in F1 because it's his first race as well. So we'll start advancing time towards that first race environment. We've already got a department event here, so these will be crucial for us over the course of a season because these will impact what we get in terms of perhaps in, sometimes we'll get a resource points acclaimed, that sort of thing. In terms of this one, it's a personnel department um, event, so have a look and see just what's going on there. And I said there'll be a massive impact as to what goes down for the rest of the team. And it's just about this about Marcus. So he's been hitting his stride in the simulator while he's in the zone, which we get into focus development. So either pace or awareness. In this case, we're going to go into awareness because we want to reduce him with the chances of making mistakes as best we can. Pace will be a wrap, but of course we don't want to make mistakes in that first outing because we need some points for constructors. We can get some pre-season drive press tours to done all right, and we're doing our, our driver training camp as well. We've got a marketing event now as well. So two events before the start of the first race. And once again, it's about Armstrong, but making an appearance in the next round of the F1 Esports Championship. Could be a good exposure, would be a bit embarrassing if they lose. We'll, we'll go without it because obviously he's still he's making his debut in F1, and he's, he's got to think about that purely right now. So we're going to disagree for the time being. So maybe maybe further down the line when he's uh, settling a bit more, we'll let him do that. But for now, probably not the best things to be doing. And we get towards the closing days here before the opening race, the first round for our teams. Before we go to the actual Grand Prix itself, the race weekend, we'll have a little look at an upgrade here. Aerodynamics upgrade on the front wing, adjust the bracket, and we're looking to a powertrain upgrade as well. Sorry, no. For, for our pistons there and so those will push a bit further forward here so three upgrades now on the way one of them coming up in the in the rakes leading up to round two in Saudi Arabia and the other one's coming towards the end of March so without further ado then let's go over to Bahrain for the first race for ZRC Motorsports the first race this my team career mode so we go then for qualifying for the Bahrain Grand Prix out now for this first episode, I'm going, to, I'm going to show just what goes on here in the qualifying sessions. If you guys want to see it over the course of the series itself, then let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you guys want to see in particular, and I'll do my best to make sure I can show it for you guys. But for this one, we'll, we'll do qualifying. Three stages, trying to get through to Q2 here. And the first run in our ZRC Motorsport car, which looks very, very nice around the TK, and I have to say, I do appreciate the look of the blue and yellow. So we charge towards the line here for that first flying lap here at Bahrain. Of course, the aim will be to get through. To Q2, and we can't out qualify our teammate. I've turned, I've turned up the AI compared to F122 just to have a test to see about where we stack up, and obviously, I'll make adjustments as that goes on. So, looking forward to seeing where we stack up compared to everyone else here. So, we'll skip forward towards the end of the lap here, and we'll have to see where we come out in terms of the times everyone else sets. So, final corner for that last right hander. A bit, a bit slow on the exit, charging down towards the line, and we'll see just where we stack up in the field. DRS now deploys when you come over the line, it's a 1 minute 33.6, that puts us P9 as of right now, and I dare say that will start to slip down quite quickly, so Nodder and Piastri both in front of us there, so um, so it's, it's an alright, it's a banker lap, it's an alright start, I'll like later in the session have another run at it, and we'll have a look here, as we come down, it's like accelerating time, towards the end of the session we come out of the go, we are down to P22 here, about half a second to Piastri, and Armstrong's up there in 14th, so we're being massively out qualified right now, that's not a good thing, so let's try to have another run here, to try and have another attempt to perhaps get out of Q, get out Q1 into Q2 because Armstrong's in right now. He's into that second qualifying session, but we've, we've made a massive mistake here because we've come out with about two and a half minutes to go and everyone else come out the pit lane here to make their outlaps and they'll be getting right on the way here on the start of our final run. So we're definitely going to have to abort this one. That'll mean that we do start last for this Grand Prix unless we can actually get away with this and have, have people moving out of the way. We'll have to see how the AI responds. We'll have to go around the outside of Joe here, get some of the curves, 
nice and easy. Science moves out the way. So good move from him there. Very sportsman. But Alonso has no interest in moving out the way at all. We've got to go around him there. Going into turn number four. And just like that, I think more or less that is the end of a run. Because he almost lose the car out of turn four. Alonso almost getting jammed up behind us. So yeah, that, that'll probably be the end of our qualifying session here. Which is unfortunate. Which means we'll still be starting dead last for the race itself here. As we make our way around. And there we go then. Qualifying over. Armstrong didn't make it nearly further down to P18, so both our cars out in Q1, but that was to be expected for being entirely honest. And so dead last for us by quite a way, we're three seconds off the uh, top time in Q1, which obviously again can be expected, but it's a dire start. We've been hoping for a bit more in the race itself to get our claim up here and reach level two already, so it's a good start for us there. Hopefully we can increase that more. Without further ado then, let's go to the Grand Prix. No more testing, no more practice. This is the real deal, and it's make or break here at round one of this year's Formula One World Championship. Formula One returns to the desert today on this exceptional 3.36 mile circuit. 15 corners provide plenty of overtaking opportunities, and it could be a strategic race this one with Sakia notorious for eating up the rear tires. Watch out for drivers managing their rubber at some point during the Grand Prix. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Russell, Ocon, Stroll, Gasly, Bottas, Norris, Perez, Fernando Alonso, Albon, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Sainz, Joe, Magnussen, Armstrong, De Vries, Sargent, Oscar Piastri, Sargent. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. A new season, then a clean slate where anything could happen. Anthony Davidson is with me today as once again we get another year of Formula One underway. We're into those tense few minutes before the first race then. Everyone's a little bit nervous about reliability. They haven't been running in the hot, turbulent wake of other cars in practice. And they've not been pushing at 100% for long durations. Let's hope no one has to deal with any nasty surprises. Okay, first race of the season. First chance for everybody to see what we can do. And unfortunately, we're at the back of the grid. But let's show that you're better than this. And let's have a good race from here. Here we go now, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to show them what we can do. First race of this career mode, starting from dead last on the grip. We'll do what we can to make up some places. Points are unlikely, but if we can try and find our way up there, that'll work. Change our strategy there. Pit on to on to a set of hards from lap 12. And it seems like just pack how it was F122 with a with a one stop from mediums to hards. Here we go then for the formation lap, which is on immersive this time around. And we'll obviously be looking to make make um, warm ups to the cars. We get ready for the start. Starting right, right at the back of the grid here. Five rookies make up the bottom five of the grid. It's Armstrong in P18, De Vries 19th, Shard Sargent in 20th, Piastri first, and us in 22nd. So pulling away here for the first time. So the aim for this race most likely will be to beat Armstrong in this Grand Prix. Just sort of get ourselves a bit of dominance over our teammates. He's already outqualified us by a considerable amount, and that's bad enough. So we want to try and beat him in the race today. Also, we want to try and make up places. Look, if we can just avoid finishing last thing, I think that'll probably be a start for us. As we come towards the grid now, getting ready. For the start, of course, this uh, the, the little mini game here lining up on the grid, having to park it at just the right point in our grid spot, going towards the line. So we'll get as close as we can here. We'll just try and aim it a little bit to the left here, see if we, if we can get good stuff over, over Piastri. Maybe try and cover him off as we go up towards our box here. Nice and smooth. And we're going to jump right into it. So here come the lights for the first race for F123. My team career mode here in Bahrain. It's a short wait. The lights and it's lights up. Put to the floor. Go, go, go. Poor getaway compared to the cars in front of us. Piastri gets a hell of a start. Going to the outside of Debris now. They go four wide with the other rookies charging towards turn one. Debris and Piastri getting fun. They're going to dive inside of Sonoda. They go three wide with Armstrong and what could be Magnussen as well. But on the inside of our teammates who go through that first corner. It's Debris on the outside of him as we go through turn two. Now still three abreast. Contact with Armstrong once again. We've gone over the curves there and he gets up in front of us, De Vries falling back, he's side by side with Piastri now, so we're up into P18, so four places gained on, on this start, not bad at all here, we'll stick in line with Armstrong just for the moment, just to try and keep us nice and safe here, so yeah, good getaway, I'm very pleased with how that at first sector has gone overall, Piastri, Snowda and De Vries, and then I believe that is, I'm not entirely sure who is behind us, 
but we'll keep on charging through here. Oh, oh yeah, the curve there, made a mistake and up the inside of now Armstrong and Joseph. Imagine making that mistake work somehow. We're not up into P16, if we can get the past you on the exit in the Alpha mode, yes we can. So up into 16th place now, gaining six places overall off this first half lap or so, and chasing down the two Haskars of Kira Magnussen and the returning Nico Hulkenberg. So all in all, a good getaway, but anything, anything just game place would have been good enough to know it's over where we start. So ultimate number two now, I start chasing down K-Mag on the run towards that first corner. we we'll try and close as best we can, and the braking zone's quite different, thanks to the new handling model. We're going to dive to the inside of him, into turn with right to the other corner this time around, and on the exit, getting in front of him, pulling clear, setting the door into the turn number two. So good getaway there from the corner, and up into P15 to start chasing down Hulkenberg to push towards the lap now. So go towards that final corner with an intent to take the German into this last turn. The pull away on the brakes into the turn. The way he missed the curve and gone wide on the exit. Unfortunately, we've managed to pull away Hulkenberg, but all out of shape on the last corner. So we've managed to pull away to about a second lead already over him. And now we'll start chasing down Carlos Sainz P13. But that Ferrari and the McLaren are awfully quick compared to our ZRC car. We charge towards the There's Perez down there in P12, I saw for a moment. And on to that number three. Now Albon was starting in that lead pack. He's fallen down towards towards the tail end of that pack and now he's falling into our clutches on those soft tires going towards turn one getting very close to him as he charged into that first corner going to go all the way to the inside late on the brakes into that first turn and gone a bit too deep on the exit to Albon gets a chance to switch back but won't get him enough of a run to have a go at us so we take another place here onto P number 13 and charging through towards turn four the DRS to try and pull away from our former teammate from F122 in that Williams machine and chasing down signs and Norris but no luck here and Albon's all over us to come towards him in the lap here going towards that final corner he's got he's on a good run he's gonna pull to the inside Maxim behind looking to counter if he can Albon gets the run into breaking zone he's got the nose on us which means we'll have DRS out the final corner that'll be crucial for us here being straight to set alongside him DRS now deployed and DRS will be deployed into the moment as well we're gonna pull the inside if we can, pushing him down the main straight here, looking to the inside, Maxon goes to the outside, there's going to be three abreast going towards turn number one here on the start of lap number five, Maxon gets in front, we get in front, and now on the inside of Maxon into the braking zone, and through that first corner, very, very tight, careful not to make contact with the Dane, and through turn two, similar to how we did on him earlier on, Tate holding on to P13, off holding off both cars there, fantastic battle there, so it really shows that AI have made vast gains compared to F122. On to lap number 8 now in this Grand Prix. We're still leading this train. You see Armstrong back there. I think he's in P17, P18 at this point. Perhaps even higher than that. I'm not quite entirely sure. Up into turn 1 though. We've gone way too wide and Joker trying to take advantage here. And Magnussen's on his inside. Those two could both try and side through. We're on the inside for turn number 2. We're taking out the apex marker as well. So both cars getting past us. And Albon might look to counter as well as they come towards the DRS zone. No DRS for us because we're the lead car in front. Here comes Armstrong into the middle. He wanted to make it 3 wide with us going into turn number 4. There's contact between us and our new teammate and he gets through and forces Albon out, so he holds up in terms of position. We're, up and, we're down to P15, Armstrong down to P16, and Max and Joe looking to try and get away as best they can here. So unfortunately for us, we've lost several positions so far. As we come towards the end of lap number 9, a yellow flag on the main straight. Not quite sure there. It looks like one of the Alpine cars. I'm not sure if it's Ocon or Gasly. No idea who that could be. See the car pulling over now to the right hand side of the racetrack off at turn number 1. It's Ocon who's out the race. Our old teammate from the last season, F122, road to go. Unfortunate for him. His bad luck continuing on from F122 over to F123 now. He's our first retiree of the series. So unfortunate for what a bit. It's another place for us. I'm back onto P14 now. We keep pressing on and Joe and Magson still there in front. So we'll see what happened here to the Frenchman as he comes down the main straight. Of course, looking to try and beat his teammate in this race today, but that'll be his hopes to be over for that in that respect. Thanks to the fall, we can't really see too much of him. There's no smoke or anything coming out of the car, at least from a distance. See, it looks like it might be a, a technical fault. Pulling the car over to the right-hand side, though, out of the race. And we'll see there is smoke billowing out the back of that other Alpine car. So unfortunate for him. We'll have to bounce back in Saudi Arabia next time out. On to the end of lot number 12 now. And we're looking at our first and what will be only pit stop of this Grand Prix. So coming towards our first pit box for the first time. Looking for a good stop from our ZLC Motorsport guys. In pit lane we go. Albon's in just fine. to change his soft tyres. Who will come out first? And the stop is a 2.4 second stop. So that's, that's still quite good. So that's compared to this. Because this is a new team and they're doing their first ever race situation pit stop. So we're away now. Up in front of Albon is a set of medium tyres. So is he trying to go from softs to mediums to the end? Will that actually work for him? It might do. In which case we might have wasted our, our, our time going on to, from, going from softs, going from mediums to hards. Albon's the inside of us at the end of the lap. They try and switch back on the inside. Don't get enough enough room to go for it. Lost it a bit on the exit. We're, I'm really struggling to some extent with the new handling. to come down the main straight. And then it's Magnussen pitting as well. He's coming out the pit exit right now as it sounds. Go to the outside of Albon towards turn number one. See where we are not. Magnussen gets out in front of both of us. He switched back to the inside of Albon. Going into turn one. Very careful not to hit Magnussen there. Went deep once again. Albon on our outside now. Magnussen just there. He's slowing us up massively. Albon's still there but has to pull back into line. Let's try and take Magnussen as best we can. Here. Going towards turn four. We're hoping we're going to have to run here. So we have to wait to try and take him 
once again, once everyone cycles through, hopefully we'll be able to get back around him. We did get back around him, so he pushed further on now to lap number 19, up into P12 after everyone cycled back through the end of their, their route for pit stops. We'll go wide there on the exit of the right hand, that allows Albon to go through and try and reclaim P12, but it's side by side going into turn number 10 now, very, very tight. You don't go too wide in here, but on the inside of him, get a better drive off and use the DRS to pull away and our battery as well. So holding on to P12 very nicely, but for how long this car may not be able to hold out of this pace for too much longer at this stage? Because everyone's been stuck there behind us. The majority of this Grand Prix and they're trying to get through as quickly as they can. We're reaching the last 10 laps of this race now. So we get very, very close to push on now to the, to the end of the line. Okay, so it's a few corners later, looking here at Alex Albon going wide in the last corner. And Albon could try and see advantage. We've got a terrible exit down this main straight. Here we come now. Albon to the inside before the DRS even gets deployed. Down the front straight we come. Albon up into position. We're going to try and follow in his wake in order to try and take the place back to go towards turn number one. It's going to be very, very, very tight into this first turn. We're going to try and go late on the brakes. We have enough for run. Go deep once again. We've outbraked him completely. We've outbraked ourselves though. And Albon goes wide. And there goes Magnussen. So it goes Joe through as well. On our right hand side, we be very, very close. Magnussen behind us against counter. We get in front, back in front of Joe. He falls back into line. We have to start working on chasing down Albon. Magnussen goes to the inside of Joe behind, but Albon is off like a shot here and holding on to P12 for the time being. So he's coming to the end of lap number 22 now. There's seven more laps to go on this Grand Prix. Albon is gone like the wind, and Joe is, really, is there behind us. I can try and make his move as well, trying to try and follow the Williams driver through. Okay, there he goes to the right hand side. We've got no chance defending against him. Let's try seconds. and stay as close as we can, like we do with Albon, and try and break as late as we can into that first corner. Again, the braking zones, I'm still getting used to them thanks to the new handling model, which is serving quite nicely so far. As we come off the corner, Joe is in front of us. Nice clean overtake for him. And Hulkenberg and our, our teammate Armstrong just behind as we come towards lap number 27 now. Just three more laps to go to it. Two and a half laps to go in this Grand Prix. And now Armstrong is the car looking to try and counter. As we come down towards that final corner and looking to try and hold these two off as best we can on this next main street. That could be a challenge. We've gone wide though and have gone over the curb a bit. And Hulkenberg could try and take advantage with Armstrong right next to him. They're side by side together down the main straight. We're going to be a sitting duck here. These two both having DRS and presumably their ERS deployed. They're going to take it through while we'll be stuck in the middle here. As Armstrong goes to the inside of turn one, Hulkenberg around the outside into that first corner. Both cars get in front of us. We've lost two places there. Let's try and get them back as best we can here. Off the corner they come through turn two on the outside of Armstrong here. We try and get in front of him with a better run off the corner and DRS deployed trying to take Hulkenberg if we can get close enough to him. Going to pull to the inside. Hulkenberg tries to defend from us. We've gone even deeper than he has and got forced him way wider that allows Armstrong to come in and counter and take away P15 as Piastri gets there as well. Hulkenberg jumping back in the pack now and we're only going to hold on for another one and a half laps off our teammate in his closing stage of this Bahrain Grand Prix. So he's pushing on now to the final lap or nearing the final lap of this Grand Prix. Okay, Armstrong right there behind us, not willing to give us an inch in the slightest as we close on that last corner. And there's a yellow behind us. Hulkenberg is going remarkably slow. And looks like he's out of the race here with a lap and a half to go. Hulkenberg is threatening us at the start of this lap. Now almost out of the race as Verstappen's coming to the last couple of corners to take it will be the first win of the season. We're only going to start the final lap. It's been an incredibly slow race for us. And Armstrong now closing in. Might try and go for it on the last lap. We're going to try and beat him. I try to hold him off on this last lap, going into turn number one. He's on the inside of us. Gonna try and switch back, uh, going on the brakes. We've got no room there. Armstrong gets in front, and behind us, Max Verstappen comes through to win the first race of the season. He absolutely trounced the rest of the field today. And Armstrong's got us, though. He's half a second in the clear, and I don't think we've got anything left in the tank. In order to try and catch him, no, it'll be no battery left. I think I dare say he's just about got us. He's come to this last corner. It's a solid finish, no points for us, but P14 and P15, he wants to sniff out for a team in their first outing, but Armstrong beating us today, which is frustrating. He's got us on the last lap, and that's a regroup and move on to the next one in Saudi Arabia. But all in all, I'm, I'm pleased with that. It's a solid start. Considering what we started in qualifying, it's a, it's a good effort, and I'm looking forward to the next race without doubt. Victory for the team from Milton Keynes then, after a quality performance. And talk to me, what do you think it was that sealed the win for them? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently and it's clear to see that they've put in the work and they should be so proud of the victory they've secured here. So there we are, the Max Verstappen absolutely trounced in the competition. He's even made short work of Leclerc and Hamilton, the two other cars on the podium there. So Verstappen wins the first race of the season after a dominant showing here in Bahrain. And I dare say if he keeps on going like that, then he'll be a lock on for that third world championship. The celebrations begin then, three different constructors on the podium. So a good start for them. An all right start for us. Of course, we're a long way off points for the time being. 
I definitely can't see that happening until, especially until late on in the season. There's a long way to go. I'm looking forward to seeing what this journey has for us. All in all, a good first race. These guys begin the celebrations for them. They continue the championship fight in front of us. Today's performance means that Max Verstappen now owns top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Some amazing talent out on the track today. But Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Cohen. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. Let's move on to the constructors, and Red Bull take over as championship leaders. Well, that was certainly an exciting weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for more exciting Formula One action very soon. So we'll have a look at your final results then. Verstappen wins the race, Leclerc in second, Hamilton comes home in third, Russell finishes in fourth place, Perez fifth, Alonso comes home in sixth, Sainz seventh, Gasly eighth, Strong ninth, and Bottas takes the final points on offer. And we come to the line in P15 with Armstrong, beating us by just half a second at the end of the race. So frustrating way to lose out. But all in all, I'm pleased that he's been able to challenge us like this over the course of the race itself. Spent quite a while hanging back. But the awareness train we did definitely must have helped him in that respect. Because it was quite a tussle in that, in that part of the field. So good race for us. And of course, the Drivers' Championship being the same as the race results of Verstappen leads. Leclerc second and Hamilton third. Of course, no points of either one of our two drivers today. So we'll keep an eye on both our tallies and Armstrong's tallies. Which go towards the Constructors' Championship. Which Red Bull lead by nine points over Mercedes. Ferrari third, Aston Martin fourth. Alpine 5th and Alfa Romeo the 6th team to score points and we sit in ninth place right now which will be awarded based on race way of highest race finish if we score no points this season. So with that then, that'll cap off the first episode of this F123 My Team Crew, my guides. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smash the like button, get subscribed as we'll be getting a lot more episodes out over the next couple of months as F123 begins to grow in terms of just in terms of how long it's been out so thank you guys so much for watching and until my next video i shall see you then have a good day guys and goodbye